now let's talk about building an elite team over the next 30 days. And what I'm gonna teach you in this video is a powerful concept called putting the right people in the right seats. So let me ask you a question. As a CEO or head of company, what is your main job? No, seriously, answer that question. What is your main job? Well, a lot of people, and I've heard this before, think the CEO doesn't actually do anything. But actually, the CEO has one of the most powerful positions and most important positions in the entire company. And that's putting the right people in the right seats. Or more specifically, getting the right talent in the places so the company can be effective. So basically what I want to do is I want to tell you this amazing story about this movie I was watching a while back. And it was a Steve Jobs movie. And in one scene of the movie, Steve Jobs walks into the, this grand symphony hall with Steve Wozniak. And they're sitting there talking. And Steve Wozniak looks at Steve Jobs and says, what do you do? I mean, you don't code. You don't design. You don't do shit. Steve Jobs looks at him and says, I play the orchestra. Now, Steve Wozniak is confused, and he looks back at him. And he says, what, is, what does that mean? He said, think of it like this. You're like a flute player. You sit there, you play the flute. You're the best at playing the flute in the world. Nobody can beat you at playing the flute. But that's the only thing you can do. Meanwhile, I play the orchestra, the entire symphony, which means he put all the pieces together to make sure the company could run. Now, why do I tell this story? Because you, yourself, need to be playing orchestra. And what I'm going to show you is a powerful strategy we use to organize our companies, our businesses, and everybody we work with to make sure that the right people are in the right seats. So if you flip to this page of your companion book, and if you don't have it, I'm going to put it up on the screen. Basically, what it is, is there's six basic positions to start off with. And this is an amazing starting point because what it will allow you to do is to build your company out in a way that's powerful. Now, as you get more advanced, you can create more positions, whatever you need for the needs of your company. But it's good to start with these six, and I'm going to go over them really quickly. So head of company, number one. So you're the head of company. You'll be acting as head of company. Now, as you get more advanced, you could have like different people, different CEOs that run your company. But what's important to know in this one is that you're the head of company, so you're going to be running it. So let's just keep it simple. Okay. Sales and marketing. That's the next position that you're going to need. Now, I recommend breaking these things up. Um, but a lot of times, you know, you could do one if you're starting off, but sales and marketing, they're really two different skill sets. Uh, sales has to do more with the conversion and the marketing side of it and actually getting people into to the funnel and converting. Remember we talked about the three parts of business, which is lead generation, lead conversion, and lead retention. Whereas marketing deals more with the advertising, uh, the advertising getting out like say on Facebook or Google or, you know, just traditional print media and things of that nature. A uh, finance. Now finance is an important part of your business. And I can tell you. When you get more advanced, get you an accountant. An accountant can save you so much money dealing with taxes and stuff like that because you're running your business. You don't got time to go and keep up with all the tax codes and stuff like that. So you need to get you a good accountant. That's just day one. But that's another position that you need to have. Uh, operations. Somebody who can manage the systems and processes of your business and make sure that they're running as effectively as possible. Now, somebody that's here with us, they're actually a Six Sigma green belt. Now, if you don't know what Six Sigma is, you can look that up. That's a powerful strategy to optimize systems. So if you have um, a great person in operations, it can make your business run a lot smoother. And we're going to talk about systems in here. So just keep that in mind. Human resources. Who's going to go out and get the talent that you need? Now, your job is to put the right people in the right seats. And human resources is a good example of showing how you put the right person who knows how to spot talent, they're going to constantly bring in good people to your organization. So really think about that. If you've got the right person in the right seats, you can focus on other parts of the business. And I'll talk about some example roles and responsibilities in just a second. Research and development. Now, this one here is really huge. This is really huge. A lot of businesses become stale because they don't invest heavily into new technologies and research. One of my good friends and who works with the company is DJ, Country Cowboy, as you may know. And one thing that he does, he goes out on all these new social media platforms and sees, is this something that we could use to expand our business? Now think about that. Think of the difference between somebody who's constantly going out there finding new ways to touch the market and affect the market versus somebody who's still trying to run things like it's the 1950s. Who do you think is going to be more successful? So that's why it's important to search to invest in research and development. I mean, all types of technology. If you're doing film, if you're doing marketing, just looking to new technologies and platforms is important. And then researching new and effective strategies for your business and testing those things to make sure the business is growing all the time. 
So the next thing I want to talk about is some example roles and responsibilities. So for example, the head of company, some of the roles and responsibilities would be first priority is putting the right people in the right seats. That would be your first priority over everything. But then you could go a little bit further and say another role and responsibility is to make sure that the strategic vision and core values are in place and all the management team shares those core values. So you see, these are roles and responsibilities you will write down for the head of the company. And I recommend writing five, but these are some basic ones that you can use and specific ones, but you might have to come up with different things. Same thing with sales and marketing. Um, come up with roles and responsibilities that they need. Now, I'll give you a little hint or a little tip a little pro tip here. A lot of times when you write roles and responsibilities for a job, you have the tendency just to write the marketing director is going to be over the ad manager, and that's fine. You can write that stuff down, but something else to make your roles and responsibilities more proactive is taking these roles and responsibilities and saying, what do you want this person to accomplish over the next couple of months? Now, remember, if you're using your one-page business plan and you're using your 90-day action cycles, each 30, each 90 days, you'll be coming up with new initiatives or pushing new initiatives forward. So if you're having, uh, if you bring in a sales director or a marketing director, you should have a long-term goal that you're setting and how are they going to impact that? So remember a while back I was talking about hiring three editors in a different video. So let's say you're trying to hire 12 editors this year. So if you're bringing in a human resources person, one of their roles and responsibilities may be acquiring 12 editors this year if you're trying to build out a content team. Does that make sense? So everybody's coming in and they know exactly what they're doing and they have some measurable goal when they get there. Now you can write down multiple goals that they're going to accomplish. Don't get ridiculous and have like 70 goals that each person has to accomplish. Make it reasonable. Keep it simple. Remember K-I-S-S. -S, keep it simple. And that's what we're going to do when it comes to the entirety of the business. But this makes sure that you get the right people in the right seats. So basically, that's the way that you get organized for building an elite team. And we're going to have some more people come in here talk to you about how to manage your team, how to motivate your team, and even how to select your team, how to hire them, and all those great things that you need to start a great organization. Remember, your job is to bring the right people in. I've seen so many people think they can do it all themselves. And let me tell you something, lean in really close. Don't do that. Please don't do that because I tried to do that for years and it left me broke and just really behind everyone else. But when I got the right people around me, when I got the right people in the right seats, my business exploded. I want the same thing to happen to you. On to the next.